Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Elise. If you're new, I just cracked my toes and it was really loud. <laughs> Mid-year book freakout tag. More like, pretty good reading year so far and I'm feeling chill about it. That doesn't have a nice ring to it though, so we're gonna go with the original title and I'll pretend to be freaking out just for this one video. You know how tags work and you've probably seen this one before. There's a bunch of questions about my reading so far, my reading for the rest of the year, reading that I haven't done, reading that I have done. Um, and then I also thought that we could look at my stats later on from Storygraph. I love to look at my stats. It's so fun to learn about myself. I hope you think so too. The first question is the best book you've read so far in 2022. And I'm gonna have to say The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. And I'm just gonna skip ahead because this is also the answer to the book that made me the happiest or what is the question? A book that made you happy. Yes, this book as well. Anyone who can read this book and not be absolutely beaming their ass off the whole time, I don't understand you. I really don't. I feel like I have to find a quote. Should I find a quote? I'm gonna find a quote. I'm not gonna read every annotation I made on this page because uh, that would be too much. This is from the essay Sunsets. There are so many good quotes, but here you go. It can sometimes feel like loving the beauty that surrounds us is somehow disrespectful to the many horrors that also surround us. But mostly, I think I'm just scared that if I show the world my belly, it will devour me. And so I wear the armor of cynicism and hide behind the great walls of irony and only glimpse beauty with my back turned to it through the clawed glass. But I wanna be earnest, even if it's embarrassing. The photographer Alex Soth has said, to me, the most beautiful thing is vulnerability. I would go a step further and argue that you cannot see the beauty which is enough unless you make yourself vulnerable to it. And so I try to turn toward that scattered light belly out and I tell myself, this doesn't look like a picture and it doesn't look like a God. It is a sunset and it is beautiful. And this whole thing you've been doing where nothing gets five stars because nothing is perfect, that's bullshit. So much is perfect, starting with this. <sighs> I could make a whole video just reading quotes from this book, um, but then you wouldn't read the book, so I won't be doing that. Read the book, please. Okay. The next question is best sequel you've read in 2022. I thought about this. I really haven't read that many sequels, but I've got to say The Dragon Republic, which I read in this video here. You can see my live reaction. It was crazy. The Poppy War plants you firmly in this world. There's a lot of world building while still having a lot of action and twists and turns, but this book really takes that world and like cracks it open and the magic just gets so much deeper and cooler. I'm really excited for the third book in this series, but this was a great sequel. New release you haven't read yet, but want to. I'm gonna say Book Lovers by Emily Henry, which is currently being shoved down our collective throats on Instagram. If you're on Bookstagram, I'm sure you're with me. My library hold list basically can't move fast enough. I'm like number 15 or something and it's just, it's inching along so slowly. I really like Emily Henry as a romance writer. Her characters have so much more to them than just the love that they're falling in. Um, and I, I just am really excited for Book Lovers. It sounds really good. Honorable mention is Family of Liars by E. Lockhart. I loved We Were Liars and I didn't even know this book was coming out until I saw it in bookstores, but I'm also on the library hold list for this one. I'm not sure what the prequel is going to entail Hail. I don't know if I even need a prequel, but I'm gonna read it and I'm excited about it. Most anticipated release for second half of 2022, it's gotta be Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng, which is her third book. I have read her first two and love them so much. Little Fires Everywhere and Everything I Never Told You. The characters are so complex, dynamic, realistic. I just loved her books so much. And I think the thing I love most is they're about how being human is like doing your best and still hurting other people. Mrs. Richardson from Little Fires Everywhere is the perfect example because she thinks that she's a great person. She really prides herself on that, but she can't pull herself out of like her ignorance and just kind of her lack of empathy for long enough to understand truly what it's like to be another person. And she ends up hurting a lot of people in the process and being super unlikable. But most of the time, she thinks that she is doing the right thing. I think about that so much. It's such an essential part of the human condition that we can try our very best and still hurt the ones we love unintentionally. Um, and Celeste Ng seems to really focus on that as well, which is why her books just hit me here. I trust the woman. I feel like I will buy everything she writes. I just love her. Biggest disappointment. Ooh, I have an answer for this one. It's gonna be The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I read The Guest List in 2021 and loved it. The guest list really worked for me, especially because the setting was so vivid. I felt like I was on this creepy island. It's such an essential part of the story. Like if I think about it, I'm there, you know? After I read that book, I remember seeing that the Paris apartment was coming out and I thought, wow, I'm so excited for this because it's this like creepy apartment in Paris and all the residents of the apartment complex are just being really weird and someone went missing. And I'm like, 
ooh, this is gonna be awesome, right? I read about 50 pages of this book before DNFing it. It was so intolerable to me. It had the laziest characterization I ever read. I don't remember anyone's name, but it's like a main girl and she is going to visit her brother and her brother is like the goody goody of the family. She just keeps being like, and I'm the screw up and he's just the perfect little boy, whatever. And then you get like POVs of the apartment complex people. Again, I cannot remember this guy's name, the brother, but everyone's like, everything was so great until Martin came along. It was just so lazy. It was like hitting me over the head, no subtlety at all. I have no patience for that. And I DNF'd it. So I don't know if Lucy Foley is for me. Are any of her other books good like the guest list was? or was I just in the right place at the right time with that one? I don't know. Biggest surprise, I'm gonna go with The Godfather by Mario Puzo. This was the first book that I read this year and I spent most of New Year's Eve and New Year's Day with my nose in this book. It was so engaging and interesting. It's a really long book and I absolutely flew through it. This book has men written all over it. Okay, it is problematic as hell. It was written in the 60s. It was also written about a time prior, I think like the 40s. It's written about a bunch of really sexist men who kill people. Also, there's some weird stuff going on. The surgery. Uh, if you know about the surgery, you know about the surgery, but what the hell was that? The surprise wasn't just that I enjoyed this book, but it was that I went down an organized crime rabbit hole. I was like listening to mafia podcasts. I was watching documentaries, watching movies. This book opened my eyes to a really interesting aspect of humanity and I'm glad for it. Read this book if you dare. It is really good, but it's not gonna work for some of you and that's okay. I also haven't seen the movies, I know. Um, I'm waiting for my partner to read this so we can watch them together. And he needs to hurry his ass up because I can't wait any longer. Favorite new author. Now this is kind of a tough one. I set a goal for myself in 2021 to not read any two books by the same author so that I would kind of open my eyes to a lot of different ones. And I'm really glad I did that by the way. When I was first getting into reading, it was a great way to kind of not get stuck on any one author, but I've spent a lot of 2022 revisiting authors that I like. The answer I'm gonna give is actually Haruki Murakami, who I did read a book by in 2021 called After Dark and I literally hated it so much. This year I read Norwegian Wood. I have some issues with this book, but I loved the writing. His imagery is just so beautiful. Should I read a quote? <laughs> I think I should read a quote. If I relaxed my body now, I'd fall apart. I've always lived like this and it's the only way I know how to go on living. If I relaxed for a second, I'd never find my way back. I'd go to pieces and the pieces would be blown away. Like what the hell? So even though this wasn't my favorite book at all, I have had my faith restored in Haruki Murakami and I'm interested in reading more by him going forward. The next question is newest fictional crush. And I don't read a lot of romance. I think this question is specifically geared toward romance readers, which is okay. I also, when I read a romance, don't typically put myself in their shoes. I usually think like, oh, this is a good person for them, but I don't think like, I wish I was dating this person. I don't know, I guess I'm just like not selfish like the rest of you guys, whatever. That being said, I remember when I read People We Meet on Vacation, I really loved Alex. I thought that he was really sweet. I thought that their relationship was really cute. He seemed like someone I would actually be interested in if I met him in real life. I'm gonna be honest though, I really don't remember what it was about him. I just remember thinking that. So like, take my word for it, I guess. Next question is newest favorite character. I'm gonna bring it back to Norwegian Wood and say Hatsumi. She was like barely in the book at all, but I was just so enamored with her. She was so cool and stylish and fashionable and like smart. She had literally the worst boyfriend in the entire world, but she like saw the good in everyone. All the other girls in this book were kind of like mostly unlikable with sprinklings of likable, but Hatsumi, she was cool. I loved her so much and that's all I'll say, okay? Next question is, book that made you cry? And the answer is normal people. Um, I'm gonna refer you again to this vlog where I did cry on camera. Um, was it embarrassing? Yes, but if we learned anything from that John Green quote, vulnerability is important, people. I'm just opening my belly up to all the experiences of life. You should do the same. I realized after that video, I think the last book that made me cry was New Moon. I remember reading that book when I was in elementary school and just heaving, sobbing. So, I mean, not to compare this to Twilight, but similar reactions for me, I would say. <laughs> Favorite book to movie adaptation that you saw this year? I was looking at my letterbox and I've literally only seen one, which was Death on the Nile. I didn't think it was a particularly good adaptation, but I didn't like the book that much, so I it didn't matter to me. Most beautiful book you have bought so far this year. Most of the books I bought have been secondhand, but I did buy 
Poison for Breakfast by Lemony Snicket, which I hope you can see. There's like gold leaf on it. It is beautiful. It also has these cute little eggs. <laughs> I just really like it. I don't know. It was a really good book too. I enjoyed it a lot. The final question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And there are literally so many. I've started a lot of series this year, so I need to finish The Poppy War, Heartstopper, The Lightning Thief, uh, The Summer I Turned Pretty. I want to get started on the Stephen King multiverse. Um, so I'd like to read Carrie. I think after that is Salem's Lot and then The Shining. That's kind of a lot of books and those are all pretty long, but I'm thinking once it gets later into the year, I'm gonna be wanting to read some creepy books. That's what comes to mind right now that I don't have like an immediate plan to read, uh, but there are so many. So that brings me to the end of the tag. I am gonna go through my story graph stats in a second, but if you feel like answering the questions of the tag, which I would love for you to, um, I will leave them in the description. And if you wanna just put them in the comments, I wanna see what your answers are and if they're similar to mine. Let's record our screen and get started. Story graph. <laughs> my reading stats for 2022. So my goal is to read 52 books in the year and I have read 27, um, which means I'm ahead by four. That's pretty good. My pages goal is 20,000 and it says I'm 46% of the way through. 9,243 pages. Um, so I'm ahead by 531. I also saw that Storygraph just started putting audiobooks as pages, which really would have helped me out. I would be a lot further along if it were the case for the entire year. Um, but going forward, that's, that's a pretty nice feature. I'm glad they finally did that. So it looks like my top categories are emotional, reflective, and lighthearted. Lighthearted is kind of surprising to me. What lighthearted books have I read? I guess those are lighthearted. <laughs> um, Mysterious is close, but Dark is also close. That's kind of confusing, huh? Um, and then Adventurous is making a run for it. I've been reading a lot of kind of adventurous, like fantasy books, so that's cool. It's like an even split between fast and medium and almost no slow paced. That's pretty accurate. I feel like I don't, I don't tend to go for slow paced books. They have to be really good to hold my attention. Page number, Primarily 300 and 499, which is definitely true. I like a medium length. Okay, this one I'm kind of embarrassed about. I would like to have read more nonfiction than this, but that's all right. And then for my genres, romance is in number one. What? Some of these I wouldn't really say are romances, like Norwegian Wood, is that a romance? Um, modern romance is not a romance. It's just about romance. Anyway, next below that is contemporary, which doesn't surprise me. Yep, these are contemporaries. LGBTQIA+, that's interesting. Let's take a hit Danny Brown. I guess she's bi, okay. Uh, Heartstopper. The Atlas Six, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would consider that to be LGBTQIA. Young adult, mystery, and fantasy are all tied with LGBTQIA. Graphic novels, literary, okay, cool. How I read my books, mostly print. I'm using my Kindle a lot more these days. I just put a new pop socket on her. Look how cute she is. And then my most read authors are Alice Oseman and RF Kuang. I've read two books from each of their series so far. So yeah, number of books and pages. You can see April was a tough month for me. But considering it's only June 8th, I think, June is really coming in. And I started my channel in May, so I think it's gonna be a meteoric rise. I've been reading a lot since I started, which is really cool. My ratings, not just so good. <laughs> I mean, I guess they kind of are. This isn't too bad for me. I give low ratings. I'm not, I'm harsh, okay? But I've had two five stars, two 4.5s, two 4.75s too. So that's pretty good. So that marks the end of the Meteor Book Freakout tag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, make sure to leave me a comment with your answers to the tag or just let me know how your reading year is going so far. Um, also, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.